Hello, my name is Bob DeHilster and I am your particle model guru. I'm here today to talk about Young's double slit experiment, the, the last one in the series where we discuss the detector. The, uh, I've been asking you to uh, watch this video because now I'm going to go through it in some some detail. Hopefully you've watched it. If not, uh, you need to stop, watch it, and then uh, uh, then come back. But more than that, uh, all these all these videos that I've uh, presented relate to Young's double slit experiment. Uh, they're titled Wave versus Particle. Then I discuss part one, the interference pattern. Part two, I discuss diffraction. And today I'm going to talk about the detector. Now, one of the things that uh, uh, Professor Khalili, Al Khalili, shows up front is that when you shine light looking uh, through a double slit, you get the interference pattern. We discussed this. This is nothing new, and uh, but that's using light. But when he goes into the uh, explanation and, and, and all the detail, he starts using an atom gun. Professor Al Khalili then uses he uses and he, he's using the atom gun uh, in a sense to simulate grains of grains of sand. He showed how you can pour grains of sand through a, a, skin, a, a screen and have two slits and as the sand goes through it piles up in two piles. He uses that as a mechanical example and he's going to use an, a, an atom gun he, that he calls it and shoot uh, atoms through there and simulate and get what he wants to get is this two piles to uh, piles of sand or two bars on the uh, target screen. It's when he shoots these uh, atoms that strange things happen. Uh, and, and, and one of the questions I have is, is he really shooting atoms? Uh, how does he know that? That's a question we need to ask on a uh, continuing basis. How does the presenter know what he's talking about. How do I know what I'm talking about and, and uh, can I back up what I say? Well, if you look at many other uh, uh, sites that talk about the double slit, you can see that uh, there are many times when the uh, they use electrons going through a double slit making the interference pattern. In fact, in this particular document, uh, which really deals with Schrodinger's wave equations for this experiment, they mention not only electrons, they mention photons and, uh, new and neutrons as particles that they can send. But Professor Al Khalili uh, uses atoms. And so he shoots a stream of atoms at a single slit and he gets one bright vertical bar on the screen. Well, when I tried to find an image of that on the internet, I couldn't find it. You notice that this image that I, I a simple one with a single slit and one bar, also has other smaller bars like as showing an interference pattern. I sometimes wonder if Professor Al Khalili had actually continued shooting streams of atoms over and over and over again. It, might he not have seen this? But he stopped short, so I, I, I don't know. So you know, if I could ask him, how how does he know whether or not these would have shown up? Uh, Nobody else seems to show it except that, uh, that it, it has an interference. Although this one probably is using light, and if light is a wave, and then wave is going to have an interference pattern. It's very confusing. Sometimes it's hard to find exactly what you want to explain what he is saying. Then he shoots streams of atoms at a double slit, and he gets an interference pattern. Well, uh, you know, that's 
really not what he expected. He expected two double bars, not a whole interference pattern. And when he compares it to his sand flowing through double slits, that's what he was expecting. So this is not what you expect. So he talks about the fact that maybe, maybe uh, the atom sees the screen, sees the double slit, and, and, and then and behaves in a different way. Uh, maybe there's forces there. Uh, maybe maybe the atom splits in two. Uh, I mean, he, it, it's getting, uh, it, it's, he's really starting to guess. I, I, you know, I, I, in a way, I don't know. Something happened and I really don't know. The one guess he made, which I think is quite, quite useful, is that he says, well, maybe there's a cloud kind of hinting at the fact that maybe there's more than one atom or more than one particle. My son David, many uh, quite a while ago, uh, probably a year or so ago, he came up with the idea that, no, they're not shooting just one particle at a time. They're shooting multiple ones. How do they know? So they decide that they're going to learn more about what's happening. They shoot one atom at a time. Uh, I emphasize here no detector because uh, later on the detector comes into play. They shoot one atom at a time. They get the same thing. So it isn't now before that was streams of atoms. Well, now it's one atom at a time. They get the same thing. Somehow the atom uh, knows there's a double slit or, or whatever. Not really any good explanation. Well, and I've already covered this. What if the atom was aware that there's two slits? Maybe the atom splits in half. Maybe there's a cloud of atoms. Uh, but, but as a critical thinker, how do you know you are shooting only one atom? Um, my particular uh, take on it is that they adjust the electron gun until uh, it, the intensity is so weak they don't get a spot on the screen at all. And then they crank it up just a bit. And then they get a spot on the screen. Uh, that doesn't guarantee to me one atom. Now, maybe they have it. I don't know everything about the technology of that that allows them to say they're doing one atom at a time. But that's, just, to me, a serious question. OK, so now they put in a detector to see which side the atom goes through. Shoot one at a time through the uh, at, towards the screen with two slits, and they put a detector, and they expect really to get uh, an interference pattern, but they don't. They do. It, it, the detector does indicate somehow that half of them go through the top slit, and, and therefore maybe have other half go through the bottom slit but they don't get an interference pattern. They're expecting to see an interference pattern. The only thing they're trying to find out is which side does the atom go through. And clearly, one, the atom goes through one side only, but it gets the wrong pattern. Well, then they get tricky. Someone goes over and unplugs the detector, and they shoot one atom at a time. And now they get an interference pattern. Professor Jim Alkalili has no explanation. In fact, he promises a, a very nice prize if you can answer it. I doubt that Bobby Hilster, with in his sitting here in my little office with a computer, is ever going to be considered for that kind of prize. But nonetheless, quantum mechanics doesn't have an explanation, and the particle model at least suggests a possibility. OK, <laughs> in previous uh, videos, I showed how uh, streams of G1 particles in, with a wave pattern, when, it, when they go through a double slit, set up an interference pattern. I'm going to use this as a basis for the uh, 
various uh, steps that Al Khalili went through. <clears throat> now, one of the things to really this is the key. This is the key to the whole problem. I mean, it's, it's, it's for an electrical engineer like myself. It's it, it shouts at you. When the detector is plugged in, it has DC current flowing in the circuit. Those uh, those lasers work on DC. You have a laser pointer, it's got a battery in it. It's a DC current flowing through. Even if you plug it in the wall, it's converted to DC and the DC current flows. When the detector is unplugged, it has no current. So we have current versus no current as the clue. So now what we're going to suggest is a special experiment. I'm going to change this detector to use an electronic circuit that allows the DC current, that is the flow of G1 particles, through this circuit to, to, to vary from zero to full, whatever that is. I'm going to make this thing and, and use it in place of the detector. So then I can adjust it. Now, <laughs> there is <coughs> surrounding all objects, not only the G2 gravitational force field around all objects, there's the G1 gravitational force field. G1 being <coughs> Newtonian gravity. G2, if you remember, G2 gravity is being suggested by the particle model to be the force that bends light as light enters a prism. It's responsible for refraction. It can bend light. So on the left, if I adjust my circuit to full current, I have a very strong G2 force. And on the right, when I adjust the current to uh, almost nothing, it still has a G2 force. Why? There are still G1 particles inside that circuit. Uh, every atom has G1 orbitals orbiting around it. So there, it's still there, but it's much weaker. When you have DC current flow through this circuit and you have lots and lots of G1 particles flowing, you can have a strong current. This, When I finally get to magnetics and electrostatics, you'll see over and over again how having lots of G1 particles flowing through an object sets up a strong G2 force field. So then we run a, uh, a, a, an experiment. We have current. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the power cord is plugged in. You have a strong current. Not only does it, is it strong right around here, but it decreases out in these directions in a sense like 1 over r squared. So you have, in particular, you can look at this one, where you have a G2 force field passing through, not only, not only passing through the light here, but passing through here, passing through the screen, disrupting the flow such that this interference pattern, which you would expect to see, doesn't happen. Maybe some of it does a little bit, but you don't see it. Some of them, in blue here, get through to the screen, and what you do see are the two bars. This is exactly what Professor Alcalilli shows when the detector is powered up. And when you take the power away, you have a small G2 force field. It still extends, but it's very weak, and therefore you get an interference pattern. Finally, what if I adjust this circuit to a mid-range somewhere? I tweak it all the way down, I tweak it all the way up, and I, I home in on it, I keep adjusting it until I get to a point, maybe, I can't guarantee this, I don't know this would happen, maybe I could actually see both of them. Maybe I could see both of them, where there's enough of an interference pattern shown and enough of the, uh, the blue here, the two bars shown, to indicate that, yes, indeed, not only is it, it the DC current causing it, but somehow it's interfering 
with the flow of light from the sl double slit to the target screen. Particle model. Our conclusion, one thing is clear. Unplugging the power eliminates the DC current. So the DC current is doing something to the flow of light. Now uh, you could argue, you can make up your own model and come up with your own idea. But that's the key. The particle model proposes that there is a second gravity, G2 gravity, that can bend light. The G2 force field exists around all objects to some degree or another depending on the content, the atomic structures, the atoms, the particles in that object. It is this G2 force field caused by the DC current, which is nothing more than the flow of G1 particles through the circuit, that changes the interference pattern from being a, a pattern to two bars. My name is Bob D. Hilster, and I am your particle model guru. Tune in next time when I will explain more of the universe using the particle model. Thank you for your attention.